That's two weeks, less than a month. Oh. I'll just talk to myself, that's all fine. I'll say that, probably isn't good. It's a biggie today now. Pyramid schemes. <laughs> Heart, base, top, mid, basic. Um, yes, notes, pyramids, and when they're helpful and when they're not and how they aren't very helpful when it comes to making a perfume. So in this room, when we ran workshops, I would, my, my heart would sink a little if somebody came in and said, I want to make my favourite perfume, um, and I know exactly what's in it because I've looked it up. Um, I'm going to have to just tell Helen I'm filming. Helen? I know. I, I'm, I'm filming, but um, we can cut this bit out. Yes. So where were we? Where we were was... If somebody comes into the studio and says, I would like to make my favourite perfume, and I've looked it up and it smells of this, and then they will give me a thing a list of things that it smells of, uh, except what they say is, it's got this in it. It's got daisies and honeysuckle and, I don't know, lion's breath and uh, icicles. I don't know, they just, they've, they've found a notes list somewhere and believe that that means that Everything that's on the notes list means it's in the perfume. And you get this language in shops, it's like, oh, what's this one got in it? And they look at them and say, oh, it's got this, 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 and this in it. So people think they can come in and say, have you got lion's breath? Because I'd like to put that in it. And they say, well, actually, no, that, that's an accord of lion's breath that will have been made by a top perfumer. I've made up the lion's breath. It's, I'm going to have to make one now. It's probably not that good a smell. No. But then, neither civet, is it? So, no, that's true. Um, so I've got, I, I mean, here's a, here's a lovely one. Um, uh, top, rhubarb leaves, ginger, heart, magnolia, narrowly, base, patchouli, musk, sandalwood. Well, first of all, rhubarb leaves are not used in perfumery. There are two rhubarb materials which smell a lot like rhubarb but they're not made out of rhubarb. Uh, this is um, one of Mark Buxton's. And Mark Buxton is you know, a very experienced, very well-known perfumer. And what he means when he says top rhubarb leaves is that at first you will smell rhubarb. But if you tried to take even the rhubarb say, and ginger and uh, magnolia, essential oil and narrowly and patchouli and muscle sandalwood and mix them together, they would smell horrible. Um, because what this doesn't say is all the other things which are in there to make the perfume smell great. Which Mark, in his skill and experience, will know you need to make it happen. Um, and anyway, why why is it top, middle, and base? Does, do people actually compose perfumes in slices? No. Um, in perfumery, a top note is something which lasts a small amount of time. A middle note is referred to as something that lasts a bit longer, and a base note lasts a lot longer than that. So that's uh, you know, if people are making perfume and say, "Oh, that one's a top note," it means it doesn't last long. Sort of, except nothing is actually quite as simple as it seems. Um, I got asked yesterday, you know, exactly what proportion of a perfume should be top notes. And the, the answer is, well, what do you want it to smell of? <laughs> because if you want an eau de toilette, that is very refreshing and lasts half an hour, then make it all out of top notes. But if you want a, a deep amber leather tobacco, 
you might not put any top notes in at all. So the phrases the, and the, the fact that you're supposed to have like three at the top and three in the middle and three at the bottom, you can completely understand why people believe that this is a thing. Mm -hmm. And occasionally it's a thing, but a lot of the time it's just not like that at all. It's, it's an illusion. Um, I've got Perfumes of Yesterday out, which is published by Mycel Press. Go to their website if you want it, because if you try and get it on Amazon, they don't sell on Amazon, so um, you will only find it secondhand very expensively. But uh, I can put something in the comments about it. But Perfumes of Yesterday uh, are formulas that have been collected by David Williams. And for example, here's a, <laughs> a nice old recipe. It's called Jasmine and Musk Rose. Top notes, Otto of Rose. Middle notes, Extract of Jasmine. Basic notes, Essence of Musk. Rectified Spirit, Set Aside for One Month and Filter. So, yeah, there used to be some structure to, I mean, this is a very, very old recipe. I don't know even when it's from because it doesn't say, but um, it says it would have been made, um, <laughs> it doesn't say. Nope, hmm. I'm not helping. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> next though, a, a Kew Gardens bouquet. So this is... Um, uh, also doesn't say when it's from uh, still not helping but Kew Gardens Bouquet says top notes extract of violets and spirit of Neroli middle notes extract of jasmine extract of rose extract of tuberose spirit of geranium so spirits are essential oils and extracts would have been on fleurage methods so a bit a bit heavier and stickier um, Basic notes, extract of cassie, which is related to cinnamon, extract of civet and extract of musk. Those will have been the natural animal products. There you go. Top notes, middle notes, basic notes. Because that's sort of how it was before synthetics were introduced into perfumery. Now we've crept over here into the late... 19th century for the elderflower recipe and this one is top notes oil of oris and terpineol which is synthetic middle notes absolute of jasmine absolute of rose anise aldehyde benzar benzoate heliotropin and basic notes coumarin and musk ketone so the whole of the bottom half of it is now synthetic, but it's still top middle base. And yet somebody said, what does it smell like? Like you probably say, it smells of, I mean, Topinial is used in um, hyacinth fragrances and lilac, that's good. It has a curious thing, it's like halfway between lilac and toilet cleaner by itself, in my, to my nose. Um, but you use it with other things and it doesn't smell quite so off-putting. So, Oris, um, very expensive, made from irises, iris rhizomes, the underground bits. Um, jasmine rose, expensive, and then the other things, not so expensive because they'd be mass produced. So we're starting to talk about perfume, which would have been much more affordable than 100% uh, naturals. We're moving on into uh, a cactus flower recipe here we have. Um, cactus flower perfume. I've, n I've never smelt a cactus flower. But anyway, maybe it's a, it could have been invented. It could be one of those like, I think if a, f a cactus flowered, it would smell like this. Cactuses it. do flower. They do, but do they smell? And that I don't know. It's Can't get like, your nose close enough. Well, no. I mean, they're tiny. Mm. I've mm -hmm. seen them. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and I imagine lots of cactuses have different kinds of yeah. smells anyway, so, mm. but this is, uh, oh, hang on, does it say which cactus? 
you know. Um, but so we, the, the top notes here, it's still divided into top notes, middle notes and basic notes. Because what happened is a lot of this change sort of the way that perfume is constructed changed sort of in the last few decades of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. So still we're hanging on here to the, yes, we've got Thompson, Middles and Basic, that's how they're made, yes. Um, so extract of Reseda, which is, oh, Mignonette it says it is. Extract of Violets, so we're still using natural violets. Oil of Cedarwood, Oil, otto of rose, spirit of rose, benzyl acetate and benzyl alcohol. Now, that's in the top notes. Cedar wood is not normally counted as a top note. That's normally a class as a, a middle note because it lasts longer. But anyway, that's where they put it. Mm. Middle, jasmine, jonquil, orange flower, rose, oris, oil of ambrette, oil of clove, oil of rose geranium, oil of lang lang, absolute of jasmine, ironone which is the violet smell, so that's synthetic. Down the bottom, again, your animal things. Tincture of benzoin, civet, musk, tincture of tonka beans, tincture of vanilla, essence of civet, and cinnamic alcohol. So, so the synthetics are creeping in, and still people are saying, right, okay, that lasts that long, that lasts that long, and that lasts this long, so let's put them in as top middle base. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make historical perfumes, absolutely, you can assemble them in that way. But then what started to happen is that you get materials which smell as if they ought to be top notes, as if they are light and fresh, but they last a lot longer than you would expect a top note to do. And so what are you going to call it? So a perfumer would probably call it a base note because it lasts a very long time and that's what these things used to be. Base notes used to last, they, they were the ones that lasted forever. But what if you smell it at the beginning, it's like it turns up at, at the top? The, like if you're reading from the top of the page, if it turns up first, what are you going to call it? So, when you get descriptions of perfumes, quite often those things will then be described as a top note because it smells light. So, you asked about peach, Martha. Mm -hmm. And um, for that reason, thank you. Yeah. For that reason, I brought the peach lactone, which is also known as Gamma Undecalactone. It's also known as Aldehyde C14 although it is not an aldehyde, it's a lactone. So this is diluted to 10% in ethanol. No, this is diluted to 5% in ethanol because actually it's all you need. Mm. So, peachy, mm. creamy peachy. Yeah. This gets listed quite often in a perfume as being a top note because do you feel how Light and bright it is. Yeah. It, it feels toppy. It feels as if it would rise and float to the top of something. Mm -hmm. But it lasts for a very long time. So if you put this in a fragrance, it will go through from the start to the finish. Yeah. Yes, it's almost as if you can taste it. I mean, mm. you sort of can. Well, we can smell it, but we'll go into that another time. I've got another um, nice fruity one for you here. Mm. Which is, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some Ferminish things today, and this is the Ferminish Framboise 184039. So this is a, a Framboise is a French for raspberry. This is the Ferminish raspberry base. That's what I'm smelling now? Yes. Smells like pears. They're sweet. Like, like pear drops. Yeah, they're like, um... They're not helping. Are they called pears? Why is that not helping? <laughs> I suppose it's 
smell like raspberries? I think it smells like raspberries. It says, no, an yeah, olfactive reproduction of the fragrance of ripe raspberries, it says here. But, you know, fruits are fruit. Nature's nature. It's probably got some of the same chemicals in raspberries as there are in pears. I mean, it definitely smells of raspberries. No, pears. P-E-Z, not pears. Oh. <laughs> the, the sweet pears. Are they called pezzes? They're called pears, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I thought you said pears. <laughs> No, it doesn't smell okay. like pears. It doesn't smell like pears. I can see why it's what I was ruining it now. I'm back. Okay, lovely. Yeah, it smells like pez sweets. Yeah. Not pears. Yeah. Okay. No, I got you. Yes, it probably does. <laughs> right, but... Yeah. Um, I'll just... Let me just pick some of these. Because... This is where people get the idea that you have to make perfumes with tops and mids and bases, or basics, as they used to be called. Um, here we go. A luminous top note, blending sparkling mandarin and radiant orange blossom. A solar and refined heart, where peony, jasmine and tiare flowers meet in a luxurious floral bouquet. So... You know, peony isn't used in perfumery. You can make the smell of peony, which is lovely, but if somebody says, have you got peony? The answer is no. I might have peony, the mm. uh, synthetic, but um, yes. And then it, it doesn't have a base. It has a precious signature playing with sensual amber and elegant patchouli. Um... Actually, in the, in the Italian, it does call it a base. It calls it un fondo prezioso in sensuale. Ti ambra e patchouli. Ti lascio una firma indimenticabile. I think. Um, but un fondo is a base. So I don't know why that got translated into a precious signature. But there you are. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's the romance of it all, isn't it? Here's one. Uh, the song of a fountain brimming with lotus and nymphaeas, the long ago sweetness of climbing roses, the pulp of the fruit of May served at a dinner on the terrace, the delicate refined shade of a hidden garden in Brera, the historical Milanese quarter that enfolds a botanical garden. The source of inspiration, the modernity of Lombard Romanticism. So someone comes up to me and says, you know, have you got a fountain? Hmm. Okay. Have, you, have you got a hidden garden in Brera? I mean, how, how, do you, how, do, how are you supposed to capture? Um, exotic fruits, rich black orchids, sensual woods, boom. Um, mm. Exotic fruits, there are no raw materials currently made from exotic fruit because you just can't because the materials in exotic fruits that smell don't don't turn into solids or liquids so you can't make them so you you evoke the aroma of exotic fruits with skill rich black orchid uh, there there are no perfumery materials made out of orchids I don't even think there are any black ones although I, uh, I did hear once of someone told by a salesperson, and I'm not dissing salespeople here, they are trained to say some terrible things, which they then believe are true a lot of the time. But somebody was told that Tom Ford was so important that he has his own orchid fields in France, well, and fields of black orchids specially dedicated to him, so only Tom Ford black orchid is made with these black orchids grown in France. Well, orchids don't grow in fields, they don't grow in France, and they aren't black. And somebody was told to say that <laughs> um, in order to help sell, sell things. But then if you want to come and make one, you, I, I'd spend so much time on explaining, you know, deprogramming people so that they have to unlearn the things that they absolutely believe are true about perfume before they can like, throw all that away mm. and start to make something. Mm. Um, it's... 
Yeah, is there a secret recipe? It was like three at the top, three in the middle, three at the base. Not really, no. It works to an extent, but... Um, and I've, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about Carl number one. Um, I'll probably exaggerate for poetic license, but we were doing a zoom on enthusiasm and Kyle, we know, said, I've made this fragrance and I really, really like it, but it doesn't have any top notes. What do I have to put on? You know, what top notes do I have to use? And I said, you don't have to use any. And he's kind of like, I don't. But you have to. You don't. When one of the best-selling fragrances ever is made from one molecule, you don't have to do anything. And yet it's like, but this is the secret recipe. You've got to have top and the middle and base. No, you don't. Um, what's this one? Okay, the biting sensuality of a Damascus rose. Roses, they scratch, they don't bite. Mm. Heightened by a hint of bitter orange, is delectably enveloped in Venezuelan tonka bean. Wow. But if you took Damascus rose, bitter orange essential oil, and tonka, just by themselves, they would not smell like this perfume. Um, so, it's the unlearning, isn't it? I, I hate sort of breaking people's hearts when it comes to this, but... It's actually a very... It's, it's, a, it's a freeing thing, though, isn't it? To unlearn the constraints. I mean, even if they were... Even if that was a thing, someone's only decided that it was a thing. Someone has decided that it's a thing, and it's... Yeah. Um, and are they not just relative? Like the person that you mentioned who had uh, a perfume that had no top notes. I mean, it did have top notes because everything's relative within yeah. the context of its own thing. Because, yeah, if you slice it, it's like, what, what is it that you smell first? From the outside, and it, I keep saying, and I'll say it many times, materials are the input and the notes are the output. Mm -hmm. So when the, these things written on perfume packaging... There's, it smells of this, 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 and this. That's the output. If it smells of peony, it's not because someone went and collected peonies at three o'clock in the morning as the sun just came up and, um, you know, infused them for 17 days and a quarter. Uh, but it's because they made it from peonil or, you know, some fascinating aroma chemicals. So now it smells of peony. So it's, if the question is, is there peony in that? And the answer is no, but it smells of peonies. Materials in, notes out. Um, mm. And sometimes the materials which go in, if you put lemon essential oil in, it's a top note. And it's lemon. And it comes out. Smelling of lemon. So occasionally the materials equal the notes. But usually, no, they don't. What if we just didn't... I mean, presumably, notes lists are just there to sell perfume. They are there to help start a really useful conversation. Because yeah. if somebody comes up and says, what does this one smell of then? Yeah. And, and the answer really is like, do you like it, do you not like it? Well, exactly, that's, my, but, that's where I was going next. But it's very difficult to know. If somebody comes in and says, well, I don't, I don't really know. I like things that are fresh and light. It's very hard to get going. And so if somebody says, well, this one... This one smells of Damascus rose and bitter orange and tonka bean. And then you're going to get, ooh, that sounds nice. It's a conversation. Yeah. It's, and it's lovely to have a chat about perfume. Going into a perfume shop and speaking to a well-informed salesperson, it's a lot of fun. Hmm. Um, the ones that are just kind of like, oh, yes, that one, I'll put that behind the counter for you then. I'll put, I'll put this one behind the counter for you. And then, yeah, make my bonus. But... Can't blame them, can you? Because uh, everyone's got to pay the rent. Exactly. Yeah. But some sometimes it can be a little bit over the top. But mm -hmm. we had the sales trainer in here for a very well-known international perfume company. Well, in the old building, came to a workshop, and he was absolutely lovely. And and I said, I said like, "What are you? What, what are you doing here? <laughs> you can have whatever you want." And he said he wanted to learn. And he wanted to make something different. And I kept saying things and he kept just going, oh. 
That was his, his demonstration of, I can't believe what you just said. Um, literal jaw dropping and then he post it shut again. And he was saying, but that's not what they tell us. And I'm like, mm, I know, I know. Um, I would like, I would like, I would like to train salespeople. Yeah. But then I might ruin it for them because then they might go, somebody says, is the peony in this? And they go, oh, no, it's made out of aroma chemicals. And then the customers might run away. Yeah. So really yeah. we need, we need the customers not to be afraid of aroma chemicals. And that's a whole other, that was last week's film. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, um, I want to talk about um, a material called clear wood, which is from Firminish, and it's kind of, we've mentioned it, it's cleaned up patchouli, and it's very lovely, and you can use a lot of it in a fragrance if you want, and it's also um, sustainably made. Mm -hmm. So, on Tinternet, you can actually find some creative uses of clear wood from Firmanish and what what the big companies do is when they are introducing a new product into the market they will produce formulas demonstration formulas that you can use to try out to see the difference between using it you know if you make it up with or without and so I found and printed off some clear wood ones I've got an eau de toilette for him an eau de toilette for her. That's longer, so we'll talk about the short one. And there's a there's a shower gel formula, and there's a softener, as in fabric softener, mm. for what you could do with clear wood. And the the funny thing is that um, this formula adds up to ten thousand parts. So they're assuming you're going to make ten kilos of it, because otherwise, why are you going to bother? <laughs> So I kind of rationalised it back down to to percentage, which is obviously just taking off two zeros. But uh, they're suggesting 17% clear wood in this particular formula. And I have here Firminish's Perfumery Ingredients Catalogue from 2019, because um, when we last actually had a, a salesperson working for Azalis they used to buy from, used to pop in. Um, she gave me this so I could read it through, and it's very handy. It's got useful information about the, like the molecular formula, the shape it is, Cas number, which is the chemical identification, what they use for. And I particularly love they've got these little shapes. Like some of them are very pointy, and some of them are very smooth. And you know, we're, we're always describing perfumes as like raw materials. Like, oh, that one smells a bit pointy. That one smells nice and soft. And in fact, it turns out Firminish have actually sort of <laughs> drawn the graph. Uh, and it talks about how long they last, the substantivity, um, and the performance, and also remarks. So, uh, this formula that they've given us, I just thought I'd talk about what's in it, and what these things do, and you know what they're for. It's not divided into tops and middles and bases, it's actually in alphabetical order. Um, oh, do you want to smell the clear wood? Yep. Uh, so this is at 100% strength, so actually nice. it doesn't come off the strip quite as quickly and mm -hmm. easily. So it's quite dense yeah. when you smell it. So, but clear wood, it says here. Um, here we go. Can be used like patchouli or as a new woody building block at higher doses. So. What they call building blocks, I sort of tend to call clouds. But large, you can use large amounts for the structure of your fragrance. It's a soft, clean version of patchouli without the earthy, leathery and rubbery notes found in the natural oil. Now, some of us might like those, but anyway, that's what it is. Recommended for use in fine fragrances from 0.5 to 20% of a fine fragrance. You can use a fair old amount. It says it lasts for one week on the smelling strip. It's got a shape like that. That's its tenacity. And it's a heart and bass note. Wow. What's a heart and bass note, though? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, when did that suddenly happen? Um, 
Also in this uh, formula, this formula uh, is, I'm just mentioning the, the actual Fermanish things which are in it. Um, coronal, a nice flowery note reminiscent of linalol x coriander. Uh, this is from, taken from coriander. 2% um, in this formula. Tenacity lasts one day on the smelling strip. Top and heart note. Mm. How can that possibly be? But this is the way that modern perfumery occurs. It's It's just more, it's, it's more complicated. <laughs> That's your catchphrase, it's complicated. It is, it is the complicated, it's, it's the catchphrase, it's, yes, the complicated. Because you can make a lovely perfume out of like, two things, one thing. But if you start getting too analytical, say, but, but I want to know, is it the top or is it, well, could be anything. <laughs> it, it, do you like the smell? What does it do in your fragrance? What happens when you put it in? That's what we need to know. We need to experiment in these things. You can't just go, I bought that. I want it to do this. Because it might behave completely differently depending what you mix it in. It's like, it, they're like people. Mm -hmm. Individual molecules, I don't know how they do it, but according to how they are treated and what they are blending with, they'll behave in different ways. And you don't know until you try it. So, it says it gives a fresher and more floral perfumery, oh, it gives fresher and more floral perfumery effects compared with Eugenol. Oh, I've moved on to Dihydro Eugenol, sorry, I didn't help. Um, uh, it goes very well in masculine notes, fougère, chypre and orientals, we don't call that common numbers. Um, but, yeah, top and heart, Dihydro Eugenol. Um, that's all, so it's in this at 0.2% in the formula. So, so far, top notes we've actually got, top mid, nothing so far has just been called a top. Um, Hedione, they call a top and heart note. Now, mm -hmm. you put Hedione in something, it makes it last for absolutely ever. Um, that's two weeks on a smelling strip. Wow. So, why is that not? A it's base? called a, it's yeah exactly. Why isn't it? Because that's not what it smells like. We're talking about like the peach lactone thing again. It smells lighter. Yeah. So, so it's, it's been in this book. These materials are being described the way that they smell, not the way necessarily that they act. We've got the list of how it acts. It's almost like the heart mid base is beco has become a a uh, descript an adjective. I, I, well, I mean, obviously it was an, but an adjective yeah. in terms of like the quality the, of smell. Yes. Well, you know, because perfumes these days are, a lot of them are constructed to smell, try and smell the same all the way through. Yeah. So modern top notes are things which smell light, not necessarily things which don't last long. Yeah. That was my understanding of it before this as well. I, 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 I think I'd been misunderstanding what it was, what it was, you know, what originally they were meant to be. And this is... Well, you're not wrong, you see, because you will have got that impression from reading the, the, what, what things smell like. Well, those, those are the things that smell light, those are the things that smell yeah. all over there, those are the sm things that smell deep. Yeah. Um, and I think lots of people come to perfumery with that sort of impression. What smells high, mid and low? Like, I was like playing musical instruments or, or, almost. Mm -hmm. um, because you, you will smell the most the dominant ones first it's like if you're listening to a choir you hear the sopranos singing the tune first if you take the sopranos away then you hear what the the altos and then the tenors and the baritones and the basses are singing yeah yeah but you don't necessarily you know that you know it's there and it would smell different if they all went away but Unless you're a trained musician, you can't hear all the other lines going on for the top. Mm. And it's a lot like that in perfumery, I think, when um, materials evaporate and then you say, oh, white, ah, I get what's underneath now. Yeah. 
But when it comes to constructing a perfume, if you try and make it happen in stripes, like, you know, in your pyramid, they're like, I want my three and my three and my three, like it's described on the, the sales brochure or mm -hmm. the, you know, on the website, it says it's got that, that and that. I'm like, no, it doesn't say it's got those, it says it smells of those. Yeah. Um, so, Hedione HC, um, that lasts a month. Wow. So, yeah, that's uh, it, that's it's it's taken out the sort of the weedy friend and just kept the strong one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's technical description <laughs> of how that happens. Um, Norlimbanol, heart and base, but it's really pointy in the th which it is. Norlimbanol is a woody thing that goes up at you. Um, so that's in there at oh yeah, only one percent. That's fair. Um, Heart and base note, but it sort of smells like a top. Like, it's a, oh. um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with a romandolite. Romandolite. Okay, so this is a musk. It is a very delicate musky note. Says here, less fruity and umbrette than helvetolite, with more tenacity and volume on the dry down. It closely resembles galaxolide in character and performance. But the good thing about romandolite is this is the most sustainable of musks. But, get this. Top, heart and base note. Wow. A perfume. There you go. So you know what musks I would say are cashmere like. and velvet is a top, heart and base note. You're that probably feels... right. Oh yeah. Somebody else it makes is... that, so it's not in this book. I'm not going far, I'm just going to see if it's in, um, I'm trying to remember who makes cashmere land. Look them up, Harry would know. Cashmere land, here we go, page 28, the IFF book. Wow, this is really nice. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's a top, mid and base note. Well, it's a perfume. Yes, <laughs> it's a single molecule. So I've got cashmere, cashmere and velvet is a base because it has other things in it, but cashmere on uh, itself, it says, oh, I love this as well. Um, mystical, IFF describe the, uh, I kind of got a mood thing to describe them. Oh, by the way, it is our 10th birthday today. Oh, I forgot to say, I was going to open by saying. Birthday, <laughs> that's us. really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Know. Yeah, it's our, um, officially, 10 years ago today, we registered the limited company, 4,160 Tuesdays Limited. Celebrate by making a film. Um, so it says, <laughs> use up, up to 2% in a formula. Well, I think we can get a bit more carried away than that. Um, cashmere, and yeah. So we're on to IFF now. It's mystical. Um, and... Substantivity, it says 48 hours. So this doesn't say top, middle, base or anything. It just has a little, a little chart which goes over to how long does it last. And it's 48 hours on a stick. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, you can use it. You could just wear it by itself. You could. Like me. Yes. Um... Have we, made, have we made a point? Oh, I, was to make I think a point. I think you've made. I think the point has been driven home. I don't know. I, but it, what it doesn't necessarily do is help. What it does is is take the structure, the pyramid, smash it to pieces, and then said, "Nay, nah, see that doesn't work." But it hasn't really. I'm not sure I've helped because it's a bit like I say. You know, say someone is learning to paint with you know they're painting by numbers, and you fill in that color that day, and then you end up with a portrait. And somebody says, that's not how you do it. Here, here's a blank piece of paper and there's some pens. Off you go. Um, it's true. So, I will say how I make things. Because, uh, 
I, I do it like this, I find it works, and I do try to explain it to people. And <coughs> I know that not everyone else talks about clouds and planets. <laughs> but uh, here's, here's one I made earlier. So um, this is the representation of a... Let's make it all darker so we can see it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So it's a representation of a, of a marine or ozonic or aquatic fragrance, all, all those things mean the same thing. Um, this is my driftwood fragrance, so that, um, the Calone's blue, I've got, I've got a colour code thing next to it, but, um, and woods, and I've put Isoe Super in there, I, I, I draw my kind of cloudy materials, the ones that don't seem to smell of much, but they have masses of substance. Um, this one is a, a mint, toffee, vanilla planet circulating round my my solar system here um, as a Mediterranean fruits one. Um, that's my suntan lotion and cocktails one. And then I'm I'm using Ambrox and Hedione as as my support clouds. So uh, my perfumes do not have uh, three three sections. Perfumes are not shaped in triangles. It's not how it works. I, I they make Accords, which are um, different blends, so each planet I will turn into an accord, and then I balance those together. Uh, this is this is a here's another I made earlier <laughs> called oak mossery, which is a, a, a sheep fragrance, um, and that's that's how I like to picture them. And not everybody does. I know that. I'm sure. Lots of people come into fragrances with different ways of picturing them, but it's it's absolutely fine to think of your fragrance with a different structure. That's both sides of clouds, by the way. <laughs> um, I I find it much more helpful to think of my my fragrances. Like, well, what what is it? What is it? What's it for? What's its meaning? What do I want it to smell of? And then so I, I create, for me it's, it's centre, it's shiny sun, is its meaning. So this one is, uh, that, that, that first one I showed you, it's got a driftwood accord in the middle. And that is composed of technical top mid and bass notes and some which would count as top mid bass or mid bass <laughs> according to Fermi niche which I think there's their classification is much more open um, it, it, because it, it sort of it depends doesn't it what are you using it for uh, you put it with something else it'll last longer you put it with something lighter it'll last less time so I create the aroma that I want and then I add other aromas to surround that and influence it. And then I put it on or in materials which have less impact, but affect the fragrance so it can make, the hedion will make things smell lighter and clearer and musks will make things smell softer and smoother and Ice Super just makes everything smell better. And Ambrox, uh, that's my, that's the secret source of longevity. Um, but not everyone can afford to use lots of it because it's, as synthetics go, it's expensive. But, and then I tend to have a bergamot cloud in everything, <laughs> but not that one. That's actually not got much bergamot in it. But, well, we just have to... If we're going to move on from traditional 19th century perfumery, as a fly, then we have to start thinking beyond the pyramid. <laughs> I think that's it. That's a great that's closing it. sentence. Yeah, I'm not finished though. <laughs> oh, that's what you were. <laughs> I thought that it was, was it. a great closing sentence, wasn't it? But I just need to talk about this next season. Oh, I want, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, we'll try and think of another one. Sexiest scent on planet ever. 
is our best-selling fragrance. Can't imagine why. Anything to do with the name? Perhaps, possibly. It's made from four things. It's made of bergamot, isoe super, cedramba and vanillin. And actually you can use it as a, a base. You can use it as, you know, up to about 80% of another fragrance and customise it and stick top notes on top of it if you want. Um, but it works perfectly well the way it is. It starts off smelling of lemon meringue pie and pound cake and it ends up smelling of amber woods. And that's another thing. You don't have to make a fragrance that smells the same all the way through. And you certainly, that's never going to happen if you go top mid base. But I suppose I'm sort of tired of people saying, oh, but you can't do that. Right. You can if you want. Does it smell good? Well, wear it. Is it legal? Yeah. Does it smell good? Is it safe? Then wear it. Oh, you yeah, haven't got any top notes. It doesn't matter. See, that could have been the closing line, but... <laughs> that's a good line, yeah. yeah Usually you end with, it's complicated. Yeah, it is, isn't it, though? Um, what haven't we talked about? Oh, the helicopter's over now, it's probably going to tell us. That's its sign to say shut up. Mm. I mean, it's enthusiasm, that's... Oh, it really is over. I know, it's the police are coming for us. It's enthusiasm, the fragrance, was one that I made for uh, an event for Hendrix Gin. And I took the botanicals that they use. I mean, I didn't actually take them, but I took the materials. And I made the smell of Hendrix Gin. And it's as close as you get from saying the top notes are coriander, lemon, orange. The mid notes are juniper, rose, and cucumber, and oris. And then I used Hedion and Isoe Super and ethylene brassolate to make it smell like a perfume. Mm -hmm. That is actually as close as I've ever got. But really what it is, is it's a planet, it's a Hendrix planet that <laughs> I've balanced to smell just like Hendrix gin's, gin does, which it does, and then clouds. So then it actually smelled like perfume. Mm. Um, and so just to make a change then, it's not complicated. I'm going to smell it of Romandolide. Romandolide. Smells, smells better in smells, sounds better in French. Yeah. Oh, Everything does. Everything sounds better in French. You see? Yeah, my, I'm not even my honorary. I don't always wear this. I'm just trying <laughs> to look like I'm French. No. With the um, vintage Pucci scarf today. If I change the scarf, it looks like we didn't make all the films on the same day. Yeah. <laughs> Which we didn't. Yeah, a roman de lid. Must... Roman... Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Roman de lid. Lid. There we go. Yeah. What else? It's not everything else. Mm -hmm. The clear wood. Yeah. 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 I do like dirty, filthy patchouli as well. Yeah. The clean patchouli is not nice. It smells quite minty, that. Oh. Well, it's got like a zing of mint. You know, well. weirdly, apparently patchouli is a mint relative. Well, there you go. And then, and they're all related to mushrooms. Yeah. All right, on that note. Lovely. <laughs> right, on that material. <laughs> Lol. <laughs>